Hey guys, Jeremy, National Fire Radio. I'm here with Assistant Chief Bob Morris from the Stanford Fire Department in Connecticut. Chief, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. It's an absolute honor to have him on uh, video with me today. And we're at the Turner River Fire Department, which is a company in Stanford, Connecticut, uh, volunteer side of things. And they also have a career engine here as well, yep, engine which, eight. Engine eight, which has to do with how they operate here. This is an area that lacks a domestic water system. So we're talking about bringing our own water to the fire. Chief, I'd love for you to just talk about that for a few minutes, about some of the concepts here that we did, or we, you did, with the department in designing this uh, pumper tanker for this area. All right, so like Jeremy is saying, uh, we're uh, part of the Sanford Fire Department. This is a volunteer house. There's five volunteer companies. They have seven stations, uh, and they're, uh, we're consolidated with a career department. And especially in this house, it's really a combination house. I mean, Engine 8, which is like a squad engine, uh, is in quarters with them and everybody knows everybody in engine 8 knows how this rig operates they can operate it they know the whole setup this is a tanker we just did this tanker last year it's a Marion uh, uh, 3,000 gallon tanker with a 1500 GPM hail pump it's a class A pump could be used as an engine but it's primarily a tanker a water delivery system and we run it like a system so what happens is is when we get a box in a non-hydrant district in Stanford. Non-hydrant means we're more than 1,500 feet or so from a pressurized fire hydrant, and which is very common up here. It becomes what we would call a tanker operation. So that means we're gonna get four engines. We're gonna get four engines on the box, which includes a rig. We're gonna get a truck, a rescue, and then our tanker, our tanker support system comes out. Stanford, City of Stanford, we have three tankers. This is the newest one. This is kind of like our primary tanker. This would be called out to any non-hydrant district in the city, not only Turner Rivers. So this rig would respond as part of the assignment. What would happen is the volunteer engines would, would go in, they'd operate on the fire. The first due career engine would go in, operate on the fire. The second due career engine would lay a line in up into the driveway right they would leave a five inch line at the street at the foot of the driveway and the idea would be is the first tanker that gets in would supply that siamese so he would go into a, a, a tanker nursing operation this box is part of that operation the tanker drivers and all the guys who work up in this area know exactly what goes on he'd pull up he would immediately supply water with this this is three and a half inch this is not supply hose. This is actually pressurized hose. Right. This is the same type of hose that New York City uses on their engines. This is the, what they use for the LDH. This would be hooked right directly into that Siamese and hooked right into his his LDH discharge or any discharge. doesn't matter. And uh, when told it was okay to do so, he would supply water. We're supplying water now. Now we have a pretty good water supply for those uh, firefighters that are up there fighting fire. Then they would go into setting up a dump site. So the dump site would consist of, this, this is a tank lift here. We have one on the other side, Zyco tank lift. It would come down, it's a 15 foot, nine foot wide, single lane tank. We set the tanks up in front of the engine or possibly behind the engine, leaving this lane open. So we'd have the tank up in front of this rig, for example, if this was the pump engine. So no matter what street we're on, even a real narrow 20 foot wide, uh, you know, uh, rural residential type street, we've done it. We've done it on some real nasty streets. Don't have to set up a big dump site in the intersection. It works great. Right. And this box would come out. Everything you need to set up the dump site is in here. We have an elbow fitting, which would be, so what we would do is in order to get, uh, we, don't, you ha we don't have a front suction on any of our uh, newer rigs. Uh, Belltown's rig on purpose didn't have one. This rig does not have one. Uh, we go into the side, we, we actually we actually draft through our uh, TFT um, suction valves. Right. So we would pull this apart and get this thing unhooked. We put our adapter on there. So we get our adapter set up and that allows us to go with this elbow. So with this elbow on there, it gets the hose. We can put it. You know, we could, actually, we had a fire in uh, in Darien, and we ended up drafting it from behind 
with one of the engines strapped it with the tanks in the back. So right. it would work either way. So we'd run our suction hoses. The suction hoses are in the back of the rig, they're 13 foot long. So they're a little bit longer than a standard suction hose. So two of them, it's fine. We got plenty of room to get up into a tank. That's that's how our that's how our dump site works. Now we probably would not use this as the dump site engine. This is actually it could, but ordinarily we would want this to shuttle the water. Right. So I mentioned we put four engines on the box. Well, we put four engines on the box. We got two for fire attack. <clears throat> One is the RIT, so that's three. The, the third engine, the third engine actually sets up the dump site. So we have a, a, a specific engine, a four person crew to work with the tanker driver to set all this up. It's right. not really a good, it's really not a one man job. No, for it's, sure, moving water like that? No. So we team up the engine. So just like we mentioned with high rise fires, we team up engines in the city for like a standpipe job. At a rural job, we team up the first two engines to go fight the fire. And then we team up, then we have an engine just for the, the dump site tank to work with the tank. Right. So that's how we've been working uh, the rural operations in the city. So far, real good success with it. Uh, we've been very lucky getting all the water you want to fight the fire. We have the aggressive fire department. We have 54 guys on duty. We have a, a, a large volunteer contingent. I actually just added up my volunteer forces to do a, somebody was requesting a, how many volunteers we actually have? I got uh, 137. That's outstanding. On the roster. It's great. So we have a lot of volunteers in this city and a uh, relatively large career force. Yeah. 54 guys on duty. So, yeah. Well, I said it before, Chief. It's fun to talk with, you know, Captain Morris out of the FDMY about water supply, rural water supply. Yeah, I think it's, figure that. Yeah, right. I think it's hysterical, <laughs> and I'm loving every second of it. But the forethought that went into not just the apparatus, but how they operate with the size of the the holding tanks that they have so that they can maintain one lane for travel, one lane for drafting, the elbow coming out of the the, uh, the main intake for drafting procedures. All of that goes into a lot of forth, foresight yeah. that went into planning and how we operate. Trial and error, I see, you know, I've, I've, I, uh, I'm always asking questions. I go to the other departments, I see how they operate. Sure. I pick the good ideas, we try to bring them into our own place and develop them. And, uh, this is how we do it, and it's a citywide operation. I mean, this is part of our directives now. Yeah. So this is how we're going to operate. Every every person in the Stanford Fire Department, everybody in the volunteer side, actually knows how to make this happen. Awesome, Chief. Thank you for your time right discussing uh, your drafting operations and holding tank issues here in uh, Stanford. And uh, thank you for joining us for Jeremy National thank Fire you Radio. Very much.